Okay, so uh, my last video was about these Vitruvian hacks figures and how cool they are. But the same studio, Boss Fight Studios, has also taken on a figure license with Bucky O'Hare. Now when I was at New York Comic Con, I saw the prototypes of their Bucky and Jenny figures on display. Um, and so imagine my surprise when a mere month or so later at Rhode Island Comic Con, I found that they had actually released the first production run. So of course, I just had to pick up a Bucky O'Hare Jenny, which is you know, like, like, look at her. She's awesome. I think somebody actually asked me to make a custom of her a long time ago. Um, they never actually committed to it, so I ended up not making her. But, uh, look, now an actual figure of her exists, and it's awesome. Uh, they were also selling a manga version of the original comics for those of us who were a little bit too young to catch up on the show and the comic book back in the day. Uh, when Bucky O'Hare aired in, like, the late 80s, I was barely five years old and I didn't know how TV scheduling worked. So although I had heard about the program and kind of wanted to see it, I never was able to figure out when they gave it so I wasn't able to catch it. And uh, when the show got canceled after only a season, I was kind of sad. Um, the comic is actually really good. It's it's um, amazingly well drawn and it's pretty funny and action packed. The only problem is that in this manga presentation, it can be a little bit hard to follow a lot of the action because the art style is highly detailed and fairly complicated. And I feel like this was meant to be printed in color. So printing it in black and white, I mean, don't get me wrong, this cost me 10 bucks. I'm sure it would have cost twice as much as if it was in color. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow the action because this really does feel like it was a comic book that was intended to be colorized if for no other reason than you could tell everything apart from each other. Especially like in this scene with this, with this, uh, frogman attack. Like, seriously, look at that. Look, that, that, that's just kind of, in, in black and white, this looks a little bit cluttered. But it, I bet in color, this would have looked spectacular. But, you know. The comic is still good. Um, if I wanted to spend more to get color prints or or track down the actual comic books, I'm sure it will be much more expensive. So I'm happy with what I got. So the Jenny figure, like I said with the Vitruvian Hacks video, comes in collector-friendly blisters. Um, you know, that, down here you have all your standard action figure rigmarole, including your good old... Um, um, UPC code, which everything has, and uh, you get, you get, uh, you get your logos. You got Jenny's, Jenny's, um, you know, bio, bio, yes, bio, and uh, I like, I like um, another acronym here is the Space Frigate Righteous Indignation. Space is an acronym for a uh, sentient protoplasm against colonial encroachment. Uh, basically, they're. Um, they're, they're a band of aliens who've, uh, who've come together to, uh, you know, save, save their region of space from being taken over by those, by those, in, those you know, frogs. So, since it's collector friendly, all you have to do is really just um, pop it off from the bottom. And then you can slide the card right out so that you can get access to your figure within without damaging this beautiful card art. Look at that. This looks like a comic book. Like, if I just left this sitting on my shelf and there was no glare from external lighting. Hold on. There we go. That just looks like a straight up comic book uh, cover. Like, um, in this in this big space where the action figure is, they would probably put like the villain of the week and you know, that looks awesome. But I've talked about the packaging enough. Let's get, let's get Jenny out of there and talk about the figure itself. Okay, just for a little bit of context and the height of the figure, there's my Marvel Legends uh, four, four inch Valkyrie. Uh, showing that this Jenny figure, not counting her big hair, stands just about four inches tall. Um, it, now, if you read the comic, you'd know that the uh, Bucky O'Hare kind of follows the Sonic the Hedgehog rules of anthropomorphic animals in that uh, they're pretty small. Um, in the comic, they're actually shorter than what looks like a 12-year-old boy. Uh, so... So the, these characters are not meant to be super huge, and I figure if um, you stand them next to six inch figures, then they would actually scale pretty much the way they're supposed to be. Um, of course, there is one tall race, the, the uh, space baboon people. Uh, they're, they're, ac they're actually supposed to be human size, so, so yeah, if they, if they ever get around to making the space baboons, or, or the, then, uh, then we're probably going to see 
you know, six inch figures from this line, but you know, like uh, for now they're, they're just doing the, uh, the four inch. All right, so let's get a closer look at Jenny. Um, she is incredibly well painted here. Uh, like I love that silvery paint and the vibrant uh, purple they use in her head gem. Um, her eyes have that, that effect, like it's like a cat's eye, but with the, the thingies. Um, she has a really, she, her sculpt is just absolutely beautiful going all the way down. Um, it's seriously like they just, they just took the comic artwork and just made it 3D. Um, so let's, uh, uh, the feet are really small. Um, given how huge her hair is, I imagine this would have been a nightmare to make her stand. But fortunately, the, the, the folks at Boss Fight Studios had the, uh, had the forethought to make her tail in such a way that it is perfect for using as a tripod to keep her stable when you stand her in poses. Um, yeah, it, it, it's just a really, really amazing sculpt. And uh, this figure, it was not that cheap. It was $35, but um, <clears throat> for, for the amazing quality of the sculpt and paint job, like they even, like look, they even did like a fading effect in the purple on the back of her head and on the tip of her tail. Like this is something I would expect of, of like a Figma or SH Figuart. It's really that good. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, it's worth every penny. I mean, it may be a somewhat expensive collector figure, but it's not excessively expensive, and it is really well done for that price point. Um, let's see if I can turn her head so we can see her back. There we go. Yeah, beautiful, beautifully done. All right, let's break down Jenny's articulation. Uh, her head is on a ball joint, so... It can tilt expressively, very cat-like. Um, her big hair makes uh, makes looking up kind of hard, but she can look down pretty well. Um, her arms are on universal jo shoulder joints, a little a little bit detented, and sometimes you had to put some thought into how you move them around because they they get kind of a big a hard grip in there. Um, but you know, there's still there's still a lot of range available to you. And her shoulder armor is just flexible enough that it can move out of the way when you bring her arms forward. Uh, she has a good elbow, which goes well beyond 90 degrees. Look at that. Um, and also has a bicep swivel. The, basically, it's very similar to a Marvel Legends. Uh, she has wrist swivels. And um, they're only swivels. I don't see any hinges in there, just in case you were wondering. She has a waist joint. It's up here in her upper torso. Um, which seems to be the best place to actually put that given the way her hips are sculpted. Um, her hips get a pretty good range. They can go out pretty far. There is a thigh swivel positioned inside the hip and uh, she gets really good um, 90 degree knee bends with some swivels. Uh, no double joint, but given the sculpt of her legs, that's pretty okay. Uh, one tiny little flaw. Um, they kind of do the thing that I did, uh, where they cast it in black plastic and then painted it silver, but they kind of should have had the foresight to make the pin disc silver, because the type of plastic that you make pin discs out of, it just doesn't stick. When you move, when the first time I moved those joints, they were silver, and then when I moved them back, a sliver of silver paint peeled off, like, uh, like, um, you know, it just came off. Some of the silver paint on her ankle is still there, but as you can see, if I move it, it's it's uh, already starting to scrape there. So I don't, I don't think I'm gonna have silver ankle joints for much longer. Uh, so yeah, her feet can go forward and backwards and they do hinge to the side, but given the shape of her high heel boots, they, it, if, you, if you go overboard, it can look like she just broke her ankle. And her tail is on a, it actually looks like a pseudo Reveltech or Figma joint there. So it can rotate and it can go in and out. So if you wanna if you wanna do a more splayed leg pose and still use her tail to tripod her, that is perfectly doable. So, yeah, this figure, this figure um, would be it would be a top heavy nightmare. But thanks to her tail, she is imminently poseable and looks fantastic doing it. All right, so. Uh, you probably saw in the package that she comes with some swappable bits. Um, so let's take a look at those. 
Though Jenny doesn't come with any obvious accessories like a blaster or something, but she kind of doesn't need them because look at all this stuff. She has not one, not two, but three swappable faces, including the face that she comes with. That, in that means four faces, which is amazing. She has a pair of effects hands using um, psychic energy to form like uh, daggers. Very, very Psylocke of her. And then she comes with two more hands, fists, gesturing hands, and some effects parts, which kind of looks like something the Scarlet Witch would have, but again, given her power set, it's pretty much something that you would expect her to have. Wow, I just compared Jenny to two X-Men characters. <laughs> Swapping out Jenny's face is pretty easy, although the plastic is kind of hard, so you gotta be a little bit careful. Um, I found the best way is just to kind of hook my fingernails in to the fur on the sides and just kind of wiggle it back and forth until it pops out on this interesting trapezoidal peg. And um, there's a texture in the back of her head that looks like it was 3D printed. I'm not sure if that was actually 3D printed or if they put that uh, texture there to increase friction. So uh, let's... Let's take a quick look at Jenny's alternate three faces, so um, I can try out some uh, transition effects. Yeah, so her original face has this open mouth smile where you can see her tongue and a hint of fang, but she also has a much gentler smiling expression where um, you don't see her tongue and her fangs are not exposed. I also love the tastefully applied purple lipstick, very nice, very nice. And then she also comes with this very nice winking face. Um, you know, it kind of a cheeky, broad smile. Like, they really, like, they didn't just close one of her eyes. They, they also know that when, when a person winks, it usually drags up that side of their mouth. So, yeah, that's a very nice attention to detail. And, yes, in the comic book, Jenny is a character that knows she's attractive and will occasionally use flirtation to, to, to get people to lower their guard or do what she wants. Uh, to draw another parallel, she's kind of like Rouge the Bat in that manner. <laughs> Uh, but yes, very, very nice expression. I really do like how, how, um, the fi you know, the, the physics of how a face works has been applied there. So, good, good attention to an anatomical details. And we finally come to what I like to call her battle face. Uh, this is a somewhat sterner, a little angrier expression. Uh, you can see it affects her top lip a little bit in that her mouth is just the tiniest bit asymmetrical. And you can see how one eye is kind of narrower than the other. Like she, she's arching an eyebrow like, oh, you want to start something now? So yes, uh, depending on what pose you put her in and how she's set up on your shelf, any of these faces um, can really help. Um, and since I'm going to be talking about her effect parts from now on, I think we'll leave the battle face on for now. Okay, so like I said, um, she does come with alternate hands. Let's, uh, let's demonstrate swapping one out. As you can see, the hand is the kind of thing that has like bumps on the, on the thing, so that it has a uh, good purchase inside of her wrist, so you don't have to worry about them accidentally falling out. You just gotta pull with, it comes out pretty easily though, so you don't have to worry about pulling really hard or, or risk breaking the plastic. And they go in pretty easily too. And just like that, Jenny has a fist so she can punch some dudes. Of course, Jenny is the kind of character that doesn't really have to worry much about punching because of her amazing powers. So, um, when you get one of those hands off, uh, you can take this effect part and kind of slide it over there. You can see, like, in the central ring, there's even a hole to accommodate the gem on her wristlet, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of botching my demonstration here. So then you, you just kind of slide it on just like that, and then you can put on one of her psychic gesturing hands and boom yeah that that does a really really good job of just looking like like the effect from her you know like like that that sparkly psychic bubble effect from her card art yeah that that's basically what they're trying to replicate in this and then, of course, one of her hands actually just is an effects part. It's that uh, psychic energy dagger thing. Like, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's meant to be an energy dagger or if, or if it's just an energy blast that she's getting ready to fire and it's caught in mid-firing. But it does look really cool. And, like, it's cast in this translucent purple, but the hand is still visible from the other side. So, like, it just... You can just, like, uh, 
you can just you can just mix and match and you can have you can have her dual wielding psychic energy daggers you can have you can have energy thingies coming out of both of her wrists like like you can just really kit her out and it looks pretty freaking awesome uh, like like I said, I was always disappointed that I was never able to get into Bucky O'Hare back in its own time. But it's nice to see that it's it's um, it's held up in the public consciousness long enough to actually become nostalgic and to get us and to get an amazing toy makers like Boss Fight Studios behind making something like this. Um, so yeah, she is really fantastic. And once again, if you really if you want to get in on this and not have to go to a convention to buy them, uh, you can probably pick them up from BossFightShop.com, which is Boss Fight Studios store. And yes, the Wave Wave 2 will be coming soon. Uh, so let's cut to some video I shot at the con itself so we can actually take a look at the whole figure wave as it was presented over there. So these are the two figures available to purchase here at the con right now. You've already, you've already seen me talk about her. Um, here's some stuff they have coming up. Um, Storm Toad Trooper, very cool looking. Love his armor design. Also has an alternate face. Um, Holiday Bucky, done up like a like an Easter chocolate bunny that is adorable and funny. And there's an anniversary Bucky. Sub. Slightly different than the uh, original, slightly different colors. Uh, then we got this guy, uh, Corsair Canard. It was more, it was more way at four arms, but then you know, alien. The rules of our human anatomy do not apply. And then of course some alternate colorings. Love the love that look for Bucky down there, and like a full-on translucent hair version of Jenny. It also looks really cool. So, yeah, that's gonna, um, so yeah, there's more coming from this Bucky O'Hare line. Tons of stuff. Really cool.